Now, today marks 25 years since the nation woke up to the news that Princess Diana had died. Well, I'm joined now by broadcaster Dermot Murnahan, who, as you saw there, broke the news on ITV, and royal commentator Jenny Bond, who was also on air that day. Uh, good morning to you both. Um, Dermot, an extraordinary time, and looking back, you were at home and you got a call to say, get back to the studio. Yeah, get into the studio. It was a Saturday night. I'd been out, I think, at the football um, that afternoon fast asleep in bed. My wife has uh, recalled the events. We were celebrating the recent arrival of our second child. She was three months old. I think she was up breastfeeding at 1 a.m. in the morning. I was face down, fast asleep. My, my editor rang and said, uh, put Dermot on the phone. She said, well, he's fast asleep, you know, more or less. You know, what are you ringing up late on a Saturday night for? She said, put him on the phone now. I got on the phone and he said, you know, get here as quickly as possible. I lived about 10 minutes away from the ITN studios where I was then working. And he told me something has happened to Princess Diana. That was, he was in such a hurry. I got in the car, straight into work, and then the story developed, the night yeah. developed. But delivering a headline like that, uh, Dermot, it's almost, I'm guessing, feels like there's a huge responsibility with it because there's a weight on your shoulders to deliver this shocking, enormous news that's going to absolutely permeate throughout the entire world. And you were reading it live for the first time. Mm -hmm. It was literally hot off the wires. It was kind of news to me as well. I mean, during the course of the evening, by the time that it was confirmed that uh, the princess had passed away, um, we'd been on the air for about three hours as the story developed from a serious car accident, but the princess had survived, we were told. There were reports of broken collarbones and things like that, none life-threatening. So when I was told to break that news, which we had confirmed from many sources, the wires, our own sources in Paris and in, in London, um, I hear in my ear, just read the statement, just read that statement, which I had not read before. Mm -hmm. um, and so for, for me, I'm also computing as the audience are computing, comprehending that we've gone from a serious incident involving the, the princess and her entourage to her being dead. Mm -hmm. And I'm absorbing it, and not, not quite in the, in the clip you showed there, just when I, I hand over to, uh, one of our correspondents to bring us up to date on the latest news wires, there's a catch in my throat. That is me just going, what did I just read out mm -hmm. here? And I was very glad to get that slight space there just to get my brain ordered about what I had just announced yeah, to the nation. Absolutely. Um, Jenny, uh, you had a very personal relationship with, with Princess Diana and you've described your blood running cold that night. Um, a shocking moment even for, for both of you as seasoned journalists. That's absolutely true. Actually, my blood ran cold just watching that montage again. It was so shocking. I similarly was uh, at home. I was here in Devon, actually. Unfortunately, not the sort of half an hour from the studio, which I would have been in London. Uh, but we were on holiday and I told our little girl who was seven, you've got your mum now for um, two weeks, which was a mistake because I disappeared in the middle of the night. I, um, we'd been at a drinks party, so I couldn't drive. So I had to get a local taxi firm who came out here rather shocked themselves to be asked to drive to London in the middle of the night. They sent two drivers. They took the banner off the top of the taxi, you know, the bit that says taxi, to try to um, ensure there was um, we could go faster, really. Um, and so we went zooming up the motorways and it was a terrible journey during which I heard the, the broadcast. I could only listen to the radio, but I could hear the tone change um, of, uh, of the newsreaders and the presenters in London. And I knew what that meant. I knew something incredibly serious that they knew she was dead, but they couldn't yet tell anyone. And I arrived in the studio about six o'clock and like Dermot, no doubt, just broadcast all day long. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the days and the weeks following the, this horrific news, Dermot, um, there was this extraordinary period of national mourning and you were very much part of that and reporting on that. How did that feel, being in the middle of all of that? It was that crucial week um, from the death to the funeral to witness, as you say, extraordinary events, the public mood, 
clearly national mourning grief, the, the flowers, the books of condolence that were, that were being signed, and it, people in their millions uh, turning out just in the UK, and let alone what was going on around the rest of the world. And the public mood during that week was, I mean, look at the popularity of Her Majesty the Queen right now. 25 years ago, in three days' time, if you know what I mean, as the week progressed, there was a wave of unpopularity sweeping, I think, Buckingham Palace. They resolutely refused to lower the, the royal standard above Buckingham Palace because, of course, Diana was no longer a, a, a member of the royal family. She had had her HRH title taken away from her and protocol dictated that you did not fly the flag at half-mast. Eventually, I think they, you know, the, the penny dropped and uh, we got a broadcast from Her Majesty, a, a, a visit to, to the flowers and some of the tributes um, by her and the Duke of Edinburgh. And then, of course, we saw the, those extraordinary scenes at the funeral itself when uh, the Duke led those, the, 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 the royal males behind the coffin, including, what, 12-year-old Prince Harry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that image... Uh will probably stick with me maybe more than any other, mm. actually. I think that was, oh, it was just so deeply moving. Um, Jenny, at that time, you, you actually spoke to the Queen's private secretary. Um, what was going on in the palace at that time? Well, halfway through the week, they realised that they were getting this incredibly wrong. There had been so much dispute and anger in London about the funeral route, uh, the flag, as Dermot says. Um, and halfway through the week, the private secretary up there said, we thought that there was going to be some kind of mutiny, that the Queen would be jeered and booed if and when she came to London. We realised we were getting incredibly wrong. Um, and that's, I think, when they changed a great deal about the funeral arrangements. But it was the most critical week, and a week in which I think the Queen was be bewildered. She didn't realise that people needed her in London as much as her grandsons needed her at Balmoral. She had that conflict that so many working women have, actually. Do I, do I stay with the family or do I put my work first? Um, and so she stayed with the boys, but the anger in London was palpable, as Dammit would know. Mm. It was, it was, and as you say, you, you felt it. Mm. You, you, you could, you could feel it changing, and um, it did seem to take a bit of time for the the royal family to catch up with where the rest of us were. And Jenny, you, you like I say, you, you knew Diana personally, and um, she did have a magical way of interacting with people, including yourself. And she actually wrote you little notes. She sent you little presents. There was something very special about her that made everyone that meet, that met her feel really quite important and indeed loved. Yes, I think that's why her, her star still shines quite brightly. She was such a complex personality, but if you met her and knew her um, a little bit as I did, you, you couldn't help but like her. She was funny. Um, she would giggle at herself. I will always think of her as, as throwing her head back and laughing, you, normally at some, some joke against herself. Um, she was also, um, you could say, not manipulative perhaps, but wily, wily in her use of the press. Um, and the way that she interacted with some of us. I mean, sometimes I do wonder if I am the most stupid reporter who ever walked this earth because she told me practically everything she said on Panorama, but she asked me to keep it confidential, and I did. <laughs> but did she really want me to? I'll never know, because she was, a, she was a difficult lady in many ways, but I liked her enormously. Yeah, so interesting. And it's interesting, you, Dermot, just watching the back, you, you very rarely watched that since, and it still feels emotional to hear you read the words. It, it, it really does. I mean, it feels like it's someone else doing it. I mean, obviously it was 25 years ago and uh, look at the difference in the hair. But um, yeah, it was quite, as I say, it was just probably, I suppose to, to put it in context, the most extraordinary night of my broadcasting career, 38 years in all. Yeah, absolutely. Dermot, thank you so much for, for remembering those, those moments. And thank you, uh, Jenny, for joining us this morning as well. Thank you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of The Rain on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.